lot of interesting stuff happens in the hallway. It happens, uh, you, you know, you get to walk out of, of a session and there's a collective experience that you just went through. And so there will be a hallway conversation that springs up discussing the material. Alrighty, let's make some friends with CUDA programmers. So uh, first, maybe what is CUDA? CUDA is NVIDIA's GPU programming toolkit. Uh, it provides a nice unified model for general purpose compute on NVIDIA GPUs. You get a high and low level driver APIs from multiple languages, CUDA C++ for this talk, for this audience, um, but of course you can also use Fortran, MATLAB, Python, et cetera. You got a number of cool libraries, uh, Kublas, Kuo50, NVJPEG, et cetera, and excellent profiling tools for how to make sure your GPU utilization is really high. We don't care about any of that though. We wanna write our own code running on the GPU directly executing on all the threads. So how do we do that? The programming model for CUDA is you assume that each thread is independent and you write code as if it was running on each individual thread. You, uh, you, when you launch a CUDA program, you launch a kernel, or when you launch a, a kernel in a CUDA program, what you're really doing is saying, I want to run this bit of work across the entire GPU. Uh, you subdivide your problem into grids, which is up to three dimensional, approximately unlimited, and then each grid is subdivided into thread blocks, uh, and then those thread blocks all have warps inside. All that's to say, you have an independent work which you're grouping hierarchically. Uh, how that looks like in practice, you say you have some problem size, this X size, Y size, you specify I have some number of threads per block, so that very finest subdivision, and then some number of blocks that you would take your problem size, divide by that, uh, that group, and then you launch a CUDA kernel, so with the special uh, multiple chevron syntax, as I learned the other day, uh, fancy word for it, you specify just number of blocks and then threads per block. So we launch a CUDA kernel with that special syntax, that's all we really need to take out of these couple, first couple slides. So hello world, uh, our first CUDA program, hello GPU. The source code, fairly straightforward, import uh, st std IO, and then we just launch this hello GPU kernel. We're doing one block, one thread, so just the smallest possible amount of work we can do on the GPU. Just run printf, and then build with NVCC, hello GPU, it's great. Uh, but we don't want to just run single monolithic function, or kernels, right? We want to make reusable code, we want to split up our, our program into nice reusable chunks, and so we write functions. Uh, the problem is functions on GPU are not just normal functions, you have to annotate them with this device uh, underscore uh, keyword, and so to do that, uh, you, you have to put that there, but once we do, we add de uh, device square, uh, device float square, and then we call that in a print squared kernel. We see, as we expect, two squared is four. You might be realizing, though, that this means that all CUDA library functions need to be annotated with underscore device, and yeah, that's true, it sucks. We can't use most of the code out there because most code hasn't been written with this, uh, with this annotation. Unless, NVIDIA's compiler gives you this nice uh, experimental relaxed constexpr flag. And so what this does is it lets you use constexpr in place of the underscore device uh, attribute. And so all I've done in this example from the one we just saw a couple slides ago was replace the underscore device uh, next to square with constexpr. So just like a normal constexpr function at this point. And I've added experimental relaxed constexpr to the build command. Uh, we can run it exactly the same way and we see two squared is four. So that's really nice, we don't have to use uh, the device keyword anymore. What this also means though, is that because so much of the standard library has been annotated with uh, constexpr, we can now use STL objects on the GPU. And so in this example, we're passing in a std array, making it on the CPU, passing it by copy into the GPU, and just printing a cumulative sum. Uh, so we should just see the cumulative sum of 10, 5, 20, and 23, which happens to be today's date. Uh, again, we build with the experimental relaxed constexpr flag, but unfortunately, we get this error. Uh, calling std st array operator bracket from a global is not allowed. And what that means is we're trying to call code that hasn't been tagged constexpr probably. We're trying to call host code. Uh, the solution is that newer C++ versions have more constexpr. So uh, in, 20s, in uh, C++ 17, we added a, the standard added constexpr support for non-const operator bracket for std array, and so now when we build with that, we can see correctly that the cumulative sum of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, of those four elements is as listed. 
but also we can use third party libraries. And so here, just a quick example, using Boost Rational, which has also been marked context expert. In fact, I think since like 2011, it's been marked. Um, so we can see tau is approximately 6.28. So context for all the things. I think this is in adjacent slides. You'll see this a few different places. Uh, we want to, we are getting more context for over time. So this is a quick chart I put together showing the number of lines that contain the word context per in, uh, in these fancy, in all the standard libraries. Uh, same thing for utility libraries and numerical libraries, just number go up. So in summary, uh, please context for all the things. Dear library authors, uh, please add context for wherever possible. Let us use your code on GPUs and make our lives easier. We'll be very grateful and friends forever. Sincerely, every Kudo programmer. Thank you. <laughs>